Okay, welcome to Bible Picture Puzzle. If you look in the center of the video, you'll see a couple boxes with small pictures in them. Those are called macro photography. They're very close up pictures of objects. I'm going to couple them with verses of scripture and you're going to try to guess what the picture is. In the next slide, I'm going to give you another scripture and show you the picture in full view. By the time you finish the video, you'll have a much greater understanding of the salvation and the mechanics of salvation and a little bit about the Bible. One key is to look on the left hand corner of the video and you see the triangle and the double lines in the gray. Look below that on the YouTube interface, you may have to scroll down to see it, but those icons, one of the two icons will be there. And the way to pause the video so you can observe the picture to try to guess what it is, is to click on that icon. And then click on it again, it'll be one of the two, and the video will start again. Okay, next I'm going to tell you how to enlarge the video so you can see the close-up uh, in, in a larger position so you can guess what it is easier. Okay, alright, keep playing. In the lower right hand corner of your YouTube video, you'll see this icon. Click on it and it will enlarge the picture. It won't make it larger so that you can see the whole picture. It'll just enlarge the macro photography picture itself so you can see it better. You should, you should do this through, through the whole video so you can see the pictures better. And then if you click it again, it'll bring it back to the small size. People usually associate these with Christmas. On Christmas, Jesus, who is God and is therefore perfect, also became a human being who was perfect because he had never sinned his whole life. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity. Hebrews 2.14 Since Jesus was both a perfect God and a perfect human being, he was able to become the perfect sacrifice for our sins. And so what happened was, when he was on the cross, God turned him into our sin. He actually became human sin, all the sin you've ever committed. And so when he died on the cross, your sin died along with him. He inherited our sin and it died. When he was raised from the dead and resurrected, all the good things he had done his whole life, all his holiness and righteousness as God, we inherited from him. What is this object? I'm going to give you a hint. It's not a snowflake but it is an extremely close-up picture of something. You may want to hit pause before I go to the next slide and tell you what it is. It's a single dandelion seed. When a seed dies and falls to the ground, it blooms again into a beautiful new flower. In the same way, when Christ, the perfect sacrifice for sin, died, he and those who believe in him rose again and became a beautiful new creation in the eyes of God. What could this have to do with being holy and beautiful in the eyes of God? I'm going to give you a hint. If you can see them, there's little white specks in there. Those are pollen. First Peter 1.20 states, For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. This fruit comes with the pit removed when you buy it. 
In biblical times, it was the first to bloom and so represents resurrection. What is it? It's an olive. Since Jesus' resurrection causes God to see us as sinless and holy, he is now able to live inside of us. And that is why the Bible says the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit live inside of us and make their abode or their home within us. Via the Holy Spirit, God made a valley of these come to life in the book of Ezekiel. What are they? Here's a clue. I found this on the beach. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. Ezekiel 37, 14. It's a bone. It's actually a fish bone. Jesus destroyed the sting of death. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? 1 Corinthians 15.55 Not only does God live inside of us, but each of us is a part of the body of Christ, according to the Bible. Can you guess where you have seen this part of an animal before? If you live near the water, you most surely have seen it before. These are my feet, and the big one in the middle is my mouth. Now can you guess where you've seen me? I'll give you a clue. The first piece was on top of me. This is on my belly. It's a starfish. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. 1 Corinthians 12, 18 Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. John 15, 4 That's what Jesus said. Now what did he mean when he meant bear fruit? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians 5, 23 Here Jesus is talking about the things you get from the Holy Spirit living inside of you. For you created my inmost being, you knit me in my mother's womb. Psalm 139 13. It's the nest of a bird called a Baltimore Oriole. Matthew 6, 26. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? What is this? You've all seen one. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Luke 12, 6 through 7. If you want to get closer to God, you can do what the insects that hatch from these cases do. What kind of insect is it? Here they are hatching. I was able to get a picture of them the moment they came out of the egg case. Now can you guess what kind of insect they are? The other way you can get close to God is to read the Bible.
it's a fortune cookie and there's my two sons again displaying the fortune cookies they're about to eat God also commanded us to use these to get closer to him what are they Those were droplets of water on a spider web. God commands us to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Bible talks about putting on the full armor of God. This is the animal's chest armor on top. This is the animal's armor on his back on the bottom. What animal is he? This is an easy one. It's a baby turtle. This is his actual size compared to the peanuts he's crawling on. I found him when he must have just hatched in the park near my house. Now what is this strange creature? I found this in the same park near my house. This creature eats things also. What it is is a plant called a sundew. It has honey-like goo on its little porcupines there and they smell like honey and the insect comes and is attracted to it but they actually act like glue and then it folds in on itself and eats the insect. It's about to eat this ant. God never wanted there to be pain or suffering in the world. The Bible says that at the end of the world there will be complete peace and all pain and suffering will be gone. How then can a man be righteous before God? How can one be born a woman and be pure? If even the moon is not bright and the star is not pure in his eyes, how much less man, who is a maggot, a son of man, who is only a worm? When he says the son of man, who is only a worm, he's talking about Jesus, when Jesus had become our sin on the cross. Before believing in Jesus, our sins remained with us, and they were as ugly as a worm or a maggot to God. But Jesus actually had become all our sin when he died, and our sins died with him. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. 1 Peter 2.24 What are these strange green things hanging from atop these pictures? He has a clue. Then when Jesus died, Joseph took the body, wrapped it in clean linen cloth, placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. Matthew 27, 59 through 60. When the caterpillar is about to turn into a butterfly, first wraps itself in a cocoon. This is similar to Jesus who was wrapped in linen when he died, just before being resurrected with a new body. In the same way, our sinful selves have died with Christ, and when he rose from the dead, God considers us as having risen from the dead with him, and we inherited all his beauty and righteousness as well. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5.21 This is the whole point of Jesus coming to earth and becoming a human being, so that he could turn into our sin and die, so that our sin would die with him, and that we could inherit his righteousness. Thank you very much.